This is Good Morning Cincinnati, live on Local 12. Clancy Burke live in the Breaking News Center and just within the past couple of minutes this morning, this morning, this morning, this morning, right now in Japan happening just within the past 30 minutes, just within the last half hour, just within the past couple of minutes in the Breaking News Center. I'm Clancy Burke. What's up guys? Today I'm going to be taking you through a day in the life of a breaking news anchor and it all starts out with dishes. Obviously I'm kidding but seriously I did need to do my dishes and uh, now we can go. <laughs> All right, so I just got here. It's just before three o'clock, and right now my very first step is to go and talk to the producers, see if they know of anything that happened overnight, and also get two glasses of water, do it every morning. It's a must, gotta hydrate. Okay guys, it is now four o'clock. I've been working for about an hour. It is crazy that I've been working for about an hour when you're just like working away, time freaking flies. That's the best thing about this job. But here's how it works. I have to come in and find at least three stories to start out, at least, like that's my minimum. Throughout the morning I normally have closer to five, six, or seven, just because things pop up. But every day is different. At first, finding the stories can be so hard. Sometimes I come in and I'm like, boom, this happened overnight, like boom, boom, boom. Today was a struggle, and that's why I wasn't really videotaping anything, because I was like, oh my god. So we're gonna go over all of that after I finish my makeup. And now, it's makeup time. I love being able to do this in peace and serenity and happiness. But let's face it, I'm always rushing and that's what's about to happen. And here's just a little sneak peek into my makeup bag. It is ratchet. And by the way, this is my outfit. I'm forced to wear sandals because I have a really bad cut. All right, so right now it is 424. And if we scroll, 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 scroll. Okay, what I look for is CBU. That's how I know I'm in this hit. Our first hit is at 4.43, so we're a little bit later in the show today. I could be anywhere from 4.27 to pretty much 4.43 in the very first half hour. And right now I need to get ready for the show. The very first thing is this guy right here. This is called an IFB. This is what allows me to hear the producers in my ears telling me, hey, you have two minutes, stand by, cue, all of that. And I also can hear the show with this. Now it is time to mic myself up. This is very sketchy because I have to stick this up my dress, so that is not something you're gonna see. And here in the Ricky News Center, I cover anything that Pretty much, pretty much anything that happened after like 11 o'clock last night, that's fair game for me. And then also if we have new video, you can kind of put a spin on it. Yeah, this happened yesterday, but new video just into the newsroom this morning. And now it is time to print. So this right here is a script, and you see how you see Clancy on cam, words, 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 and then it says take VO. Well, when it says take VO, that means that the video will roll, and that is when I can start looking down at this and start reading from it. But all anything Clancy on cam, I need to memorize. Typically in my news stories, like that I do regular reporting on the streets from a normal job, because, oh, by the way, this is not my normal job. I'm just filling in for a couple of weeks for someone else. I don't do scripts. I do bullet points if I need them, and I just like to just speak. But when you're in the breaking news center doing five, six, seven, eight different stories on international, some in Afghanistan, some in California, some in Florida. I'm doing scripts. I'm not taking any chances. That's like just too much information. And just make sure you memorize the part where you're on camera so you're not looking down reading. And then obviously when breaking stuff happens, there's no scripts, you just talk. So what I'll do for the next two, three minutes is pretty much just read this over a couple of times, try to get it memorized, just because yes, I do have this script, but you never know when they're gonna take the video and you can't rely on it happening right away, so you kinda do need to memorize more than you would think you would. By the way, this right here is the box that allows me to hear everyone. I plug it in, boom, I can hear. Clancy oh. Burke, live in the Breaking News Center. And this morning we're learning new information about that massive boat fire in the Breaking News Center on Clancy Burke. I want to give you guys a little tour of the Breaking News Center, what it is all about. This is the Grand Center. The funny thing is, do you guys see all of these buttons and switches and all of that? None of these work. It is all 100% for show. But hey, it looks good, so you know what? That's uh, that's all that matters. This is a little box that I stand on, my little platform, and then this thing allows me to see myself. So you see how I'm looking at myself? Which is nice, so that when you're standing on the box, you know exactly what you look like. Now you're probably wondering what all of these monitors are. I mean, the ones with weather are self-explanatory, but for example, who is she? Who is she in that girl's head? These are national correspondents. Right now they're actually covering Dorian. Uh, so they're in the storm. You can see how windy it is right there. Over here is the camera. This thing stays put no matter what. And you'll notice, no, I don't have a cameraman. It is just me standing right there. And there's really no need for anyone behind the camera. It is interesting not having anyone behind the camera. You just feel so alone. Like it literally is me talking to myself. You're telling me me standing here and talking just to this one little camera. I'm, I'm broadcasting to thousands of people. Like in my mind, it does 
doesn't. It's just not, it's just not in my mind, which is good because it's probably why I don't get nervous. Okay, so right now it is at 5.07 and I've printed out some of my scripts. The only thing is these change a lot when breaking news happens, like when I have to switch scripts, but for now we have my 5.12, my 5.32, 546, 605, 633, 645. And then we have a whole bunch more after that, but this is just for now. My next hit is in four minutes, and this is on Afghanistan. 16 people dead after a suicide attack in Afghanistan. It happened in the nation's capital. So it just goes to show how different all of my hits are. So right now it's six o'clock, and I'm thinking to myself, hmm, I'm actually feeling a little bit tired. I haven't had a sip of tea since I have a cup of tea when I'm doing my makeup at home, but since I got here, I always bring this thermos my tea and I forgot to drink it, which is crazy. And it's funny because whenever I meet people, the first thing they say to me when they hear my hours for this breaking news center, it is from, I get here just before three o'clock and I leave it around 11.30. They're like, oh my gosh, I can't even imagine how much coffee you must drink. But honestly, I don't drink coffee. And like more than half the time, I'll just laugh along with them just to be agreeable and relatable. And I'm just like, yeah, so much. <laughs> Meanwhile, I don't drink coffee. What's up guys, just wanna check in right now. It is 7.06 on the dot. And I just checked in with one of my producers for the 8 a.m. show, so that's the thing. You have separate producers for each and every show, like the 4.30 show, the 5 o'clock show, the 6 o'clock show, the 7 o'clock show, the 8 o'clock show, the 9 o'clock show. You need to be in constant communication and contact with all of them. Something I'm constantly doing all morning is checking the Associated Press, CNN, CBS, like just trying to find if there's anything that popped up. And it's one of those things where you literally just have to keep on checking because you could check 900 times and there's nothing new that popped up within the last 30 minutes, but then on the 900 first time, oh my gosh, this huge thing just happened. So it's kind of nerve wracking. I don't want to miss anything. All right, so now it is 8 20 and I have my biggest break of the morning. I don't go on for about another hour, which is insane because normally it's like every you're going on three times an hour normally. But something I want to address that I've actually gotten questions about and that every single person in the news business faces is reporting on sad situations. Here in the breaking news center, there's nothing happy. Like there's no, I was thinking about that, there's no such thing as good breaking news here. I mean, obviously you could say like breaking news, like, oh my gosh, Kate Middleton's pregnant, but it's, that would not be the case here in the breaking news center. Um, and it's like right now I'm reporting on 25 people dead in California in a boat fire. And the, the way that I say it is that when you're reporting on it, you almost don't think it's real in my mind. Like the reason I'm able to just go about my morning and just, you know, live my life, it's, it's like, um, it's like fiction almost in my head. And it's when I'm a viewer at home and I was watching the evening news on this, I'm like, oh my gosh. I just feel like in the news industry, you kind of put yourself in a whole new, Mindset. I mean, the anchors, and this is like the anchors have to face, they read all the news. So sometimes as a reporter, I'll just have a full morning of just fun stuff as a morning reporter. As an anchor, you're always constantly reading tragedies. It's just part of the business. I think it's kind of just a matter of like separating yourself from it. You can't let yourself think about it too much. So you report on these tragic situations and then you just get on with your day. You make your oatmeal and you eat. And just, it's weird. It's just, working in the news industry, it's a weird, weird thing. Thing. And it's definitely not for everyone. I mean, there are a lot of people who probably watch my videos and they're like, she picks up at what time? She does what? I don't want to do that. But then I also get comments from people saying this is exactly what I want to do. But as I mentioned, I have my biggest break of the morning. So I'm going to use this time to do a Facebook Live. That is something that I've been doing a lot lately. And that is huge in our news industry, just social media in general. If you are an aspiring reporter, get your social medias pop in, like start posting a lot, getting followers, getting traction. If you go on job websites for reporter openings, they will give the basic requirements, you know. Four years of college, maybe two years of experience, live experience, you have to have anchored for this amount of time, whatever. But there will almost always be must have social media skills or like experience or something like that. It's huge because we're interacting with the viewers. You want them to feel like they're your friends. And you guys are my friends. I mean, that's funny, so my social media is collide. Yes, we have some people on my Facebook page, for instance, who are local 12 viewers, but also you guys. And the reason for me, it doesn't feel like work. I know there are some on air people who just don't like it. They just aren't into social media and there's nothing wrong with that, but it is their job. So it's a requirement. So for them, it's kind of something they have to check off the list every day. But for me, I'm like, I love this. I've always loved interacting with you guys. So I find it a lot of fun. I wonder what I'm going to talk about on my Facebook live today. I'm not sure, but if you want to follow me on Facebook, my link is down below. All right, right now it's nine o'clock. My next hit is at 9.05, but five minutes ago, exactly five minutes ago, 
I was scrolling online, saw this story that just hours ago, a teenager, 14 years old, shot and killed five members of his family in Alabama, inside his home. So quickly, we have no video. This is all just breaking. This is all just happening. I'm literally about to have to go on air with this. Um, so what I did was I ordered a map. That is going to be our video. We don't have anything to show, so we'll just show the location. And then I completely canceled whatever my hit was supposed to be. So right now I have this new script. I'm about to go on air in a couple of minutes, and I need to kind of get a gist of what this is and memorize it. But First of all, I'm stunned by this breaking news. Gosh, that's why you can't think about it. Clancy Burke live in the Breaking News Center, and right now we're following a story out of Alabama where just hours ago a 14-year-old shot and killed five members of his family. This was inside a home in Elkmont, Alabama. That teenager was the one who called 911 and originally said he was downstairs in the home when he heard gunshots, but then he confessed to all five of the killings. Three of the people died immediately. The other two were pronounced dead at the hospital. In the Breaking News Center, I'm Clancy Burke. So I hope that showed you guys what a scramble it sometimes is. I feel like I kind of blacked out when I was talking to you because I was trying to type so fast and print my script and get everything and get my information and have it memorized and all of that and, uh, and it's crazy. And I'm gonna use this time right now to continue searching, seeing if there's anything new, obviously, but then also reply to emails. This is a really great opportunity for that and your guys' messages on social media, giving you guys advice or whatever you need, whatever you want. I love talking to you guys on social media. And just checking in on that reporter who is covering Dorian, it looks like things are picking up there. I mean, that's insane. Now it is 9.51. I have just one more hit left of the morning at 9.55. Do you see that time? That is the time it should not be when I haven't eaten breakfast. I just got back from the longest meeting ever. We were having just like a post-show meeting that we normally do. I thought it was gonna be like a quick two-minuter. No, and keep in mind, I've been up since two o'clock in the morning, so it has been a lot of hours since I last ate. So we're gonna go over here for the oatmeal for the win. Breakfast is finished, and my workday is just about over, and yes, I am freezing. You guys don't know how cold newsrooms are. I don't know why, I don't know how, I don't know what. They're just so cold and I guess you have to keep all the technology and whatnot. Cold, so it doesn't overheat, but I am like dying, like my fingernails turn blue. Okay, just for you guys, I removed the hood. After 13 hits on today, I did five stories. This is actually a light day. Normally I do more than five. There's just so many new things that pop up. Today that wasn't the case. And they, these days are actually harder when you're trying to find news and you're like, oh my gosh, I have a hit in 20 minutes and what am I gonna talk about? So yeah, this is a more chill day, but this is the life of a breaking news anchor. And as I mentioned, if you guys haven't been following my channel, normally I'm a news reporter. Normally I go out in the field, I'm reporting from locations, and I'm only in the show about, oh, it varies. It could be anywhere from three to eight times a morning, unless there's a bigger story and it could be even more. But breaking news anchor, you're always on minimum 13 times. So you're on more than a news reporter. And one of the biggest differences is that you're your own producer. You decide what stories. You decide where they go in the show. You decide it all. And you format them, you get the video, and that's what I do as a reporter anyway. But the craziest thing is deciding the stories and deciding the order. And it's, it's yeah, you basically just produce your own shows. I mean, you don't even have a cameraman. You don't even have someone who hits stop and go. Um, this is just continuously on, so if anyone's in the control room, they can always see me. That sounds weird. And you don't have to worry about any of that stuff. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you want to see more videos, more behind the scenes of my TV news life, because I'll be posting more videos about my news journey. I've been doing this for just over two years now in the TV news industry. This is my second job, my second market, and I'm going to bring you guys along for the ride. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.